This is Twit. But the question is, what happens to those signals, to those instructions, once they get there? Specifically, what we're going to cover today is how do you get Go? And we want Go. I mean, if it doesn't go, why are you doing it in, in the first place? So what we need to do is we need to talk about the power plant. That's right, the little electric motors, and we're talking about electric here, you can buy these with nitro fuel, but let's, let's do electric because, again, I don't like people who blow themselves up. We want to show you the two different types of electric motors that you can get for your RC models. Now, specifically, they're called brushed and brushless. Now, I know we're gonna get technical here, but this is know-how, you're all geniuses, so you'll be able to figure this out really quickly, and you understand why one is important, uh, why it's, it's important to know one from the other. Now, a brushed motor is very simple. Tony, if you go ahead and bring up that, that uh, there we go. So this is what a brushed motor looks like. This is in its most basic form. You've got a battery, you've got that, which is a power source. You've got an armature that contains the shaft, a tightly wound coil of wire, a commutator, and the assembly into which the armature is mounted, which will contain the brushes, as you, as you can see, a rotating mount, which allows the armature to spin on its axis, and a permanent magnet. You could actually build this. This is, this is a perfect model of something that you could throw together in a garage and you would get rotational motion out of it. Now, the way that it works is this. If you go ahead and uh, forward to that next video, uh, the battery provides current to the brushes. Now, the brushes are gonna make contact with the commutator and the commutator will allow the current to flow through the wire loop. Uh, go ahead, and, there you go. Now, the current flows through a loop of wire, which will create a magnetic field. I mean, if you've ever done this in grade school, if you put current through a coil of copper cable, it will create a positive and a negative pole. In other words, it's an electromagnet. Well, when you create that magnetic field, the magnetic field will interact with the magnetic field of the permanent magnet, which will also have a positive pole and a negative pole. Now, okay, here we go, magnetism 101. Like poles will repel, and opposite poles will attract. That means the positive side of the charged coil will be pushed away from the positive side of the permanent magnet and drawn to the negative side of the permanent magnet. At the same time, the negative side of the charged coil will be pushed away from the negative side of the permanent magnet and drawn to the positive side of the permanent magnet. Because of this, the shaft on which the coil rests, because it's in a, in a mount, will turn. However, if that's all it was, then it would stop at 179 degrees. It would turn one way until the poles were lined up, negative to positive on both sides, and then it would turn no more. Obviously, 179 degrees of motion isn't really enough for us. We, we want to get constant motion. We want to get constant movement. We want to get constant power out of our motors. So all electric motors depend on one important Thing. The secret is the commutator. Now, in a brushed motor, the commutator is the part of the armature that is connected to the coil. And I believe this is uh, where you're going to run another video, Tony. That makes the electromagnetic field that connects to the brushes on the assembly. Now, the commutator has two jobs. The first is to transfer power from a fixed point to the armature. Imagine you've got a, a rotating assembly. So obviously, you can't just have a wire that brings current into the coil because eventually the wire would run out of length, it would spool around itself and it would break. So this allows you to have a fixed point, those two brushes, that are transferring current into the coil through the commutator. However, more importantly, the commutator reverses the polarity of the current flowing through the armature. See how, see how it, the red and the blue will peri periodically go from one brush to the other. Every time they go from one brush to the next, they will flip polarity. And every time they flip polarity, they will flip the magnetic field being generated by the coil. That means that every time you get close to having a, 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 a static field, so positive to negative, it will flip to make it positive to positive, negative to negative, and it continues on its way. You do this several thousand times a second, and you have yourself an electric motor. There you go, folks. There is a brushed DC motor. Now, brushed DC motors have a couple advantages. The first is they're actually pretty cheap. It, we've been making these things for over 150 years, so that we've kind of got the technology down. They've also, they're very easy to control as far as speed is concerned, because there's only one control, power. You dump more current into the motor, it goes faster. 
It's, it's actually pretty simple. There's, there's no voodoo, there's no magnetism. I mean, there's, I mean, magnetism, there is magnetism. There's no, there's no ICs in here, there's no electronic sensors. It's a simple, dumb electronic device. Put power in, get motion out.